Well, hello there. Join me today. We are going to create a whimsical wonderland dresser out of this 1960s French provincial buffet. We're going to do this really quickly. I'm going to throw down some color here on the front of this dresser. I actually timed myself and I was able to paint the front of this dresser in just over six minutes. I'm using several different colors here. I've got palmetto on the bottom. I am putting on mermaid tail right here in the middle and you'll see me move from one side of the dresser to the other. I do this to keep balance when I'm creating in a very abstract way like this. Whatever you do to one side, you should do to the other as well. So I'm adding peacock and, and another color right here on the top. I'm using the same brush over and over. I'm not changing out my brush. I'm allowing the colors to sort of marry together by using that same brush. You see here that I continue to add palmetto, which is like a deep green to both sides of the dresser. And now I'm bringing in aubergine. Aubergine is a dark, dark purple. It's almost a black purple. And I love this color. I love using aubergine instead of black to add depth to projects. You'll see in just a minute as I blend the colors together, it really won't look as purple in just a minute because I'm actually going to marry the purple and the blue together a little bit. You may have noticed I haven't even really added any water into the mix yet. I'm just laying down a really thick layer of each color. You'll see me bringing in over there on the left side this purple all the way up into that palmetto and even grabbing a little bit of that brighter blue and bringing it back down. And you can see here that I actually brought a little bit of that purple up into the upper area here as well. Um, remember, this is just your first coat. This is just your first blend coat. I actually will be creating a forest scene on top of that. So this just sort of serves as an underlayer. It does not have to be perfect, but I did want it to be balanced. Listen, there really are no rules when it comes to blending. You can leave your blend very, very choppy where there's hard lines. I like to do a softer blend. So you see there where I am bringing my paintbrush from left to right, really dragging those colors across each other so that I don't have any hard lines in my blend. But if you like more of an abstract, choppy, hard look, you can do that. This is where I brought um, Peacock in straight into the center panel. But here in just a minute, I'm gonna bring up some of the aubergine up into the Peacock and then a little bit of that mermaid's tail down into the peacock as well. And the aubergine, which is that dark purple you see there, added it to that peacock. It gives this gorgeous, gorgeous, almost a denim blue. It had a little bit of a glowy effect to it too. I fell in love with this color and it's definitely a color that I will be using on more furniture together. I may not do the blend on furniture, but I might do the blend in a jar or on a plate. Um, by itself, but if you want to try blending peacock with aubergine, which is the blue teal mixed with the deep purple, it really, really is a beautiful color. So just take note here that I continue to work my brush over all of the colors around my area, across the area, over the top of the area, and when you step back and look, you really can't see where one color begins and one color ends. That is a soft blend. And now you've got a soft, balanced blend across the entire front. Right in a little water, and now I'm just gonna grab a little tiny bit of this blue and put this in here. And the blue and the yellow mix together, and they give you this really cool sort of a glowy green. So this is the scary part, and that is, <laughs> that is just putting it on my piece of furniture that I already like so much my ground to be low down about like this right but then I also want the the roots of the tree which when they get painted up when the paint when they get painted up uh, they're gonna be pretty substantial like this like you know a Louisiana tree root kind of thing take this out a little bit further so that it just starts to kind of fade away just to take off some of the excess. And I'm here and do the same thing on this side. Mixing that on my plate. See if that's a little bit different color. 
Um, we'll do some up here. I'm gonna bring down in a little bit, kind of start angling some in. It's not really a whole lot different color. Oh, this is the fun part. So now that we've got the forest trees in place, it's time to sort of give um, a cloudy, dreamy effect to this. So you can do this by watering down your paint in a, in a bowl or uh, in a bottle of some sort and then just dipping into that and adding a very, very watered down version on the piece. But I like to use a blending brush with straight paint and just a little bit of spritz of water. That way I start out with a heavy, heavy, cloudy cast and then I just keep adding a little bit more water to it and using this very 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 soft blending brush um, over it it's just sort of like putting makeup on um, you just keep blending and blending and blending until you get it just the way you like it you'll find if you add highlighted colors right up next to the dark color so I've got the darkness of the tree trunk and then I put that cloudy, glowy look right up next to that tree trunk. It really allows your tree trunk to pop off even better and it gives sort of the idea of a glow coming from behind it. Now it's time to bring in um, some greenery on our leaves. Let's try not to notice that I'm chewing food at the same time. Who does that? Who chews food while they're filming video? That would be me. I'm eating almonds, I'm sure. Um, I'm using a really coarse brush, a very small, maybe like a quarter inch wide, with very, very coarse bristles. And I'm just dipping it into probably a mix of yellow and white and teal, which gives me a lime green. And I'm just blotting on sections of fluffy leaves on the limbs. And I start out sort of dispersed all over the limbs from left to right, keeping it balanced just as though um, we were blending, just taking it from one side to the other. And then I will build on it. I will just keep adding more and more and more um, as I go. Take note of the way I'm holding my brush here in my hand very, very lightly holding the brush, kind of at the end of the brush, and not being heavy-handed, but very light-handed. Now I'm gonna bring in some shadowing around the base of the tree trunks just to make them more lifelike as if they're casting shadow. I used a little spritz of water, um, a light hand with my brush, and some dark paint. I've made like a gray that I'm using here, same color that I used on the trunks, just as if the shadows would be cast from the trunks. And then you saw me pick up the blending brush as well, and I use that brush to just sort of buff out any hard edges. All right, so my tree is done, and you can see how much greenery I did add there. And let's move on to the transfer applications now. So I had already pre-planned that I would be adding two different Alice uh, transfers, one on each end, and this is the clock transfer with Alice uh, reaching up towards the clock. I love this transfer so much. It was a perfect fit for this side of the transfer, but I did not really like the colors. I wanted to add some more bold colors, and you'll see me do that here in just a minute. All right, this is the second transfer on the right-hand side, and this is Alice sitting on top of the teapot. The colors really weren't bad for this, but I just wanted a little bit more bold. I wanted her to have really blonde hair. I wanted some of my rose, roses to have some pops of color. So we're gonna make those changes here in a little bit. Just make sure you get your transfer positioned exactly the way you want it. Press it in with your hand, and then you wanna just give a good rub all over with the stick that is um, in your transfer tube. You'll use this stick to give a good rub, and then you will start the peeling back of the outer layer of the transfer. It's really important when you've got some trim work that you're working around that I use my fingernail, or you can get that stick in there, but you wanna rub really hard over all of the edges to make sure that the transfer releases. These transfers are very, very thin. They're a very thin skin, and they will stick to anything. Um, so as long as you've rubbed it out in that area really well, you won't have a problem pulling off the, the plastic backing. And then that transfer will carry right over edges and corners and trim work without a problem. Oh, this is the fun part. Look at that. Look at the difference in color. So it wasn't my goal to paint over the entire thing. I just wanted to offer 
some suggested brighter blue than the very pale blue that was on there. I wanted something to really jump off of the dresser. So you can see that I'm using a very, very small detail brush and anywhere that was the powder blue, I'm bringing in um, using Pure Ocean, which is a brighter ocean blue, um, and just sort of covering it in. You can see that my strokes are kind of messy. Uh, it's just a suggestion of color, not a perfect, a perfect fill-in. This was my favorite part, making Alice really blonde. I feel like her hair was just colorless here. So I wanted to bring in, I am using, I think I mixed a little bit of Daisy with a little bit of fluff. So it's a um, kind of a paler yellow than the bright Daisy, but this was really fun. I tried to move my brush in the direction of the way her hair is laying there, taking it down sort of little strokes at a time. Trying to keep it somewhat lifelike. All right, we are moving on to some embellishments. I've got my Would You Bend molds here. I'm going to be using a uh, pocket watch and be applying that right there. I've painted these with my favorite gold paint, which is the Posh Chalk Gold. I believe I used uh, vintage gold and mixed it with the gloss top coat by Dixie Belle and the pigments. I mixed the pigments into the gloss top coat and I painted a, a few keys and a pocket watch and I also painted all of my hardware in that gold. So I heat up the mold so that it's nice and pliable and then I cover the back side with the tight bond glue and I will turn around and apply this to the dresser exactly where I want it just a little bit of pressure. You can see how pliable the mold is here. Choose the spot that I want it, apply pressure. If the mold has gotten hot from heating it, you can use a paper towel or a rag to hold it in place. Add a little bit more heat to it and press really hard and those suckers will not come off. Look at these little tiny keys, aren't they cute? I believe these came in a set of five and I will be hanging a few of these keys from the trees. Here I'm adding a little bit of tiny, tiny detail as if the keys have been hung with a string. So nothing perfect here, just taking that tiny detailed line all the way up to the branch where I'll actually paint a tiny bow from that branch. And you can see me do this here, adding a little loop. You see how I'm letting it be sort of squiggly and free form. Okay, the dresser's sides are gonna have rabbit holes on them, which is a lot of fun, but we do have to blend out the sides of the dresser as well that will be around the rabbit hole. So I am adding mermaid tail here and I'm gonna bring in aubergine from the bottom. And I think, I believe those are the only two colors that I use on the side. So just doing a simple blend, one color from the bottom, one color from the top, and using a little bit of water here in a minute, I will just start bringing up the purple into the teal and the teal down into the purple until you don't have a hard line where they meet. You can see here after you spray with a little bit of water and you really start to work it back and forth, you actually end up with a different color than you even started with. We won't have that bright teal at the top anymore. We've kind of ended up with like a blueberry color as we worked our way to the top, but that is what the, that's the beauty of blending. As you bring colors together, what color do you make? Then in the end, I decide, oh, I do want a little bit more tail on the top, so I bring back in a little bit more of that mermaid tail. Um, and at, once it dries, I'll probably add a little more to the top again. I did choose to prime the side of the panel because I am going to be using a lot of black and uh, I will be using only black and white. Um, and I don't want to have any bleed through in my white pattern. So, and just to be safe, I'm going to cover this with boss gray. I'm just gonna do one simple coat. It will be a blocking primer. I didn't have to worry about bleed through on the rest of the dresser because it's all dark. And 
now we are moving on to the rabbit hole. I just chose a small circular sub, uh, object that I had here in my shop. I just traced a small circle around it and then very freehand, I'm just making more circles around it. The, the trick here is to keep the bottom of your circle tighter and let your circle grow as it works up. This will keep it from looking like a bird's eye target or a dartboard. Um, my circles are tighter at the bottom and fatter at the top. So it sort of offsets it so it's not so perfectly centered. And I'm drawing this here with a pencil. Now I'm just going to choose where I want my vertical lines to go. And I don't measure this, I just draw it in a very freestyle form. The only thing you do need to make sure is that you've left an even number of spaces. So when you start to paint your black and white, you end up with black, white, black, white, black, white. We've talked about this before in other videos. Now I'm gonna follow this up with my marker. Um, I'm using a Sharpie marker here. The reason I do this is so that my pencil doesn't smear. This sort of sets my pencil. Otherwise you end up with a lot of smeared um, pencil lines. I honestly usually draw with a marker first anyway and not a pencil, but if you are just starting out or you're unsure of what your design will look like, drawing a pencil is a lot more forgiving because you can go back and erase your pencil lines. As I draw in a marker though, it's really starting to come to life for you. You can definitely see the design a little bit better and you can see how my circle is growing fatter at the top and it's tighter at the bottom. Just keep in mind that it doesn't have to be perfect. This is whimsical, so don't get all wrapped around the axle about measuring it out or your lines having to be perfectly straight or your space is having to be exactly the same. Do you see how cockeyed my circle is? I mean, it's not perfect, but in the end, it doesn't matter. It still gives a rabbit hole shape. It still gives that same tunnel effect. Just relax, take it easy, and enjoy the process. Once your Sharpie is dried, you can just take, I use a, a white rubber eraser and I just am erasing off any of my pencil lines that were there. A lot of people say right now this looks like a spider web, which it does. It definitely looks like a spider web. <laughs> we'll change that here in just a minute. All right, I'm showing you how I have a boo-boo here. Not a big deal, you can change that with paint. All right, I started out by painting in my center circle and then I just start painting every other square with black paint. Now I use a small detail brush and my black paint. I'm using silk paint here. Um, you can use acrylic paint if you'd like. You can use um, a oil-based pen, a marker that is like a paint pen. You can use those as well. Uh, you may go through a lot of them, but that works too. But I enjoy this process so much. I make sure that I've set aside a lot of a lot of time. I play my favorite music, and I just enjoy this process. This this sort of monotonous black, white, black, white, small, tiny checks is actually really, really therapeutic, and it's really good for your brain. It's good for your brain. I promise. All right, we have got every single square filled in with black paint and you can definitely see it's more of a rabbit hole here so now i'm going to use my besting wax blending brush a water bottle i sprayed that center of the circle using my besting wax blending brush and some black paint the trick is to blot off as much of that black paint onto a paper towel as you possibly can and then you just start in the center in a circular motion just start adding some of this black paint and you can see that it begins to make a shadow and just go back over it as many times as you want until you've gotten it as dark as you want. It just depends on the look that you're going for. And you can take that black shadow out as far as you want or you can keep it tight in the center. I like to take it out a little bit further. You can see me, I'll work into a larger circle here. This part is so much fun and this is the part that starts to add that depth, dimension, and tunnel effect. Look at that. 
So now I'm taking a small detail brush and I've added a little bit of black paint to it as well. I added it to the edges and now I'm taking my French tip brush and I'm going in and shadowing out my my hard edges. I didn't want it to just end as black and white around the corner, so I just sort of sweep some color on there, get my French tip brush and a little bit of water, and fade out those outer edges as well. Isn't it crazy how it actually really does look like the side of the dresser goes down into a tunnel? And there you have it. Isn't it beautiful? I love this piece so much. Look at the light coming in from behind the trees and Alice flanking each side of that forest. I did decide to add the Harlequin pattern across the top of this dresser, which I love so much. Um, I did not go into detail on that on this YouTube video, but I have many YouTube videos that you can watch with the Harlequin pattern. I love the embellished roses, um, the bright flowers flanking the clock and the teapot. I love having the crowns on Alice's head, the little keys hanging from the forest. I am so happy with this piece. I do hope you enjoyed this process. I hope that you will like and subscribe my channel. Hit that little bell so that you will be notified of any future projects coming up. And thank you for being here today.